So now he's cleaning up the heads. We're gonna get these ready to go on. Did notice something, right, Con, about these heads? These are cross flow heads. These they changed the head design from the 830 series. Oh yeah. They to went, the 870 series. With the with the newer style engine, they went direct injection. Yep. You know, no more power cells. And they went to a cross flow head design, so this is a lot better. It's what if it's a head? Is it a Hemi? It's a no. <laughs> you know, 336 over a 301 or a or a 267 engine. Yeah, I think it's an upgrade. Oh yeah, big time upgrade. And when did they start? They started making them with the 70 series. 1970. And they put them in all the heavy equipment until 84, which this engine is. Yeah. Yeah. So it had a 14 year lifespan. You'd think there'd be more of them kicking around, but like the 870 motors, when we were looking for an 870 motor, we wound up getting a dozer motor. It was the biggest four cylinder at These the time. Like big four cylinder tractors. Yeah. Yeah, and then they ditched them. They didn't run them all the way. They didn't run the 870 and 770 as far as the 970 in the series. They oh, they didn't? They couldn't make them. Oh, I didn't know that. I think so, yeah. Huh. And, then, uh, and then obviously they replaced these engines with the Cummins. Yeah, which... With the 6BT and the 4BT. Kind of just the, a smart move. The lighter cast modular blocks. They started giving the tractors frame rails. Which is kind of easy. You don't got to... Well, it's about money. Let's face it. They're sitting in the boardroom going, Hey, guys, we want to redesign a new motor. Uh, no. Yeah, you, well, you might as well use it for <laughs> more things. So If we're going to re redesign a motor, or we could just buy this Cummings motor and throw it in everything. Yeah. And we'll be what, all right. What can you use these engines in other than tractors and bulldozers it, the cummins engine could be used in anything yeah you know, so. yeah yeah just yeah. like evolution or cat and perkins and all those de-evolution uh, depending on how you're looking at it i don't know yeah. i don't know <laughs> well international kept making their own engines john deere makes their own tractor engines but case bailed out and just threw cummins motors in um, or did they international was in case merged yeah on the same time period that's true, they did. Yeah, uh -huh. so they were kind of... They were owned by Textron, as I recall. Textron. Same people that made home light chainsaws. Who knows? Who I hope they had a different quality department. Now there's... <laughs> uh, it's all owned by Fiat now or something. Yeah, like it's Fiat it's now. Just... <laughs> Our new Holland is a Fiat. Exhaust system. I guess we need an exhaust system, huh? Yeah, we do. <laughs> this is the one... This is the manifold off the dozer, obviously. And... The dozer did stuff, it, ha it had this big goofy rotten out muscle muffler, so it twisted into that and sat here yep. under the hood of the dozer. And then went up yeah. and out. But we just want to go, I'm going to cut this off, it's going to give me a nice flange that I can clean up. That'll give you plenty, Con, you yeah. can cut it way up here. And then uh, probably, I kind of want to have a big like four inch chrome stack, because I think we got material for that. So. I got a five inch stack somewhere. So we'll couple up and that'll give us something to, to weld. Well, you know, a straight, a straight three inch stack would look good too. And we'd probably get scavenging. Scavenging doesn't exist. <laughs> it does real, too. That's not a real thing. Everybody knows about scavenging. Maybe on a car with a 20, you know, with a uh -huh. 12 foot exhaust yeah. system. Mm -hmm. Well, we could run experiments, I guess. Okay, so that's the exhaust manifold and here's the intake. And that goes on this side. So we got- That's got a little short little nub on it. It does, so we need a boot that goes on that. That's gonna go there, it's gonna point us right forward. And then we're imagining we're gonna put like a K&N cone filter up front. So we're gonna ditch the whole uh, oil bath I filter so. element gizmo. Yeah, they're pain in the neck. Yeah, it's a pain and- Actually, so honestly, nice. for this tractor, it's kind of small. It necks it down to like two inches. It does, so especially this is a lot bigger. That's pretty than... big and throaty, so we're gonna leave that. This is not turbo. This is non-turbo, even though turbo could sit there pretty easy. No, not doing it. No turbo? No, no turbo. No turbo. No. It's, all it's fun a non-turbo engine. We're not messing with it. All right. You're right. just going to gonna make a nice good running track ride. It's going to make 75 horse anyways. I mean, it's going to be... Which is an upgrade for this rest of this tractor. Pretty much going to be as much power as like what a 930 would be. 930? Yeah. They're like an 80 horse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So you upgrades it quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, righty. Getting ready to put the injection pump on. Going to put these manifolds on. I want to cut that first, clean it up first. So, we, uh, <laughs> we put the heads on, and it, just the head sitting on here, we accidentally tripped over this little tidbit of info. The heads rack enough to where they weren't gonna line up. Trip over this scenario, you do wanna put the manifolds on after the heads, yep. but before you torque them. So you put these down finger tight, put on your manifolds, all three of them. It's gonna line your, your intake, heads up. Exhaust and water. 
Yeah, and that, that does line them up, right? And so now we're into more cleaning. We're cleaning up the... Uh, Just really prepping the surfaces. Okay, so Connor's bolting that there uh, fuel pump on. Put the new O-ring on. It seems a little bit bigger. Yeah, there's an O-ring there. That's all it seals it. And I oiled it up and everything, but it's not wanting to slide right in. So I'm going to slowly work it on with the nut. Yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, those are the pump marks. Yeah, and you can just, just barely see them. You kind of went over this before you put the gear on. Like, yeah. You can see them. You can see them in person. I don't know if we'll get them on film, but you can see them. Yep. They're down They're in behind there. the gear. They're like on this side of the gear. They are. They're on the flange of the pump. It has nothing to do with where the gear is, really. The gear fell right back into place, which is kind of cool. So we had the motor timed to our 29 degrees yep. off the timing yep. site there. And then we had the pump timed right where it was. I put a new O-ring on. And I slowly pressed that pump into place. and Now you got the gear on there. And the gear's in there. It meshed right up beautifully. And that's got a torque value on those that gear. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. I but need to find that It's out. in the book. Yeah. We never messed with that. Not no, that. we that's didn't. Good. We didn't want to mess with that. That's where things get a little... Oh, we didn't have to. We were just taking the pump off. We weren't going to tear it apart. So Exactly. Anyway, it's got the manifolds on. They're all pretty tight. So it's pretty much time to torque down the heads. Yeah, I think I'll do the rockers next after that. Yeah, I, heads, I rockers, valve rockers covers, and then the way. ejectors. Yep. Wow, things are going together. They are. Looking good. Get the old case back in game. So it's amazing how quick a day goes by, but... Because it's what already? It's almost 2 o'clock probably. Yeah. We've been working on this. We had to go to lunch, and we looked at a house we might want to buy. I don't know. Another investment kind of thing, but... We're not sure about it, are we, Con? I'd rather just keep investing in this tractor. Okay. Probably better money. <laughs> yeah, what does that say about the house? Uh, we're upside down in a mud puddle on this tractor if you want to talk money. <laughs> uh, kind of like channel I just tripped over and I've been watching him work on an Oliver that was all seized up and he's talking about how he's uh, gonna lose his butt on it but he don't care because he's got a soft spot for him and you know what's the way we are with this case tractor too which is a darn good thing or we'd run away screaming yeah according to the book so it's 70 to 140 and then 210 right yeah and they want me to do this guy first yeah, they got a Second. they got a sequence all in there. I mean, I, the rule of thumb is center of the head, work your way out. Yeah, circle, which is what's going on here. And that's what's head. That's what they got you doing. Okay. So I'm gonna get them down to seventy. We'll tip the tractor over. All right, so he's gonna torque them on there. And we, we figured out we got lucky with the head gaskets. The book says there's two choices. Yes, there are. <laughs> Depends on how the how much is protruding on the sleeve. And we went with uh, the head gasket that had the head what the dozer that this engine came out of. Right. So. Right. So then you're going to go to 140, and then the next one's going to be 210, and we're going to have to go crack out the bigger three quarter drive torque wrench for the 210 because this only goes up to 150. Oh, we got the big torque wrench out. Yeah, yep. I did 140 with the small one. Now we're going 210. 210 with the big one. And, you know, nice and smooth. That's Gosh. a lot of torque wrenching. Well, if I remember right, when we tore the heads off the other one, they weren't easy. No. Nope. Back and 
Yeah, well, you're Let's supposed check to. Check over again. Ooh, I should go this way. Really should. Oh, yeah, every one of them took a little. Yep. There you go. Nice. I'm confident in that. Okay. So, next thing, we get, get the push rods, rockers, valve covers, injectors, injector lines, and then we really got to figure out if our, what's going to work up front. We got to get the radiator in there, water pump, and see if we have clearance issues. I think we'll be okay, but we won't know till we know. Yeah, we might have some clearance issues. The fan pulley sits a couple inches higher on this engine, so we won't be able to run a stock shroud. Hmm. There's no shroud with this engine anyways. We didn't get one with the tractor. We didn't. Well, we if we should. have to, we'll make one. Yeah, we'll see. Then we gotta make this pulley setup work on the power steering, so I think we're gonna have to actually put another different pulley on this power steering pump. But we'll have to see. A little bit of tuning, testing with that stuff. Yep. What do you think, Merle? He thinks he wants to go outside. Oh, does he? And chase everything. Yeah, i never seen him so calm. He must be camera shy. It's my hunting dog. He's always going hunting, he never takes me. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're a funny dog, you're energetic. What is it? It's that German short-haired pointer. That's right, I knew that. All right, Merle, you're just not very photogenic. <laughs> okay, we've got a little glitch. Where the oil filter bracket goes, and that whole mount is right where the steering goes, and there's no way to get that shaft to go from that through the oil filter and into the steering. So. What are we gonna do? Well, the other option would be we dig up another universal set and we actually put another joint here. Yeah. You know, that mm -hmm. might work. Mm -hmm. That's another option. But it's looking more and more like we're gonna have to take this off and then we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna tap into those two oil ports and then run hoses somewhere that's out of our way and mount a remote oil filter. Somewhere else. Yeah, like off of this tab here or something like that. We could have an oil filter here. That's not a bad spot for it, or something. We might even be able to use this as our, our remote oil filter. You know, technically we could do that. We could make a little bracket for that to mount to. Oh yeah, we could still that remote That way we it. could keep this oil cooler thing. That's kind of neat. Now the other glitch is this is so easy to plumb in our oil return line from the pump down to this. We had that line and everything. So we got to figure that out too. Is that return or pressure? Uh, no, it's probably supply. I think it returns. That's supply, okay. It returns right through, through the, back through the front gear. I think so. Yeah. So well, well, there's the other idea is we space this out too. We space this out about an inch. Yeah. To get a block of aluminum and machine out a piece that that would just be a spacer. Which we could we could really I, do that on a drill press. So that might work. Then yeah. We, then we keep that. It's not sticking out. I'm kind of liking that idea most because it sticks out. It doesn't stick out any further in the steps. If I know. If it comes out straight an inch, we could almost still use that tube. Oh, we definitely could. Yeah. You know? Well, we'd have to get a different tube, but we could still yeah. do it. It's just the same idea. Easy to do. All right. So that's glitchy, but we got a couple ideas. Yeah. So we're hoping that the fuel filter bracket, which mounts right here, and as those double filters doesn't get in our way too. That might be <laughs> that yep. might be in the way. And this port for the coolant, the coolant port that hooks to this, that might be in our way too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to show you guys this. We had a we had to notch this out. <laughs> the notch is here for the steering shaft and the tractor bow housing, but on the flange of the motor, they evidently uh, changed the casting. The old casting had that notch in it, but the new one didn't. So we had to saw that out. It only took a minute with a sawzall. That, this metal kind of cuts kind of easy actually it's a I don't know I guess it's a cast steel I'm not a metal metallurgist or metallurgist or metal urgerist metallurgierist anyway so I cut that out and uh, we made it so we get that shaft in there okay we threw the steering shaft in there that's that orange shaft going down we don't have the universal on there yet I got new universal joints put on but it looks like that's all gonna work. Um, and it looks like the fuel filter, they're gonna hang here and hit it. So we're gonna space them out, bring them out this way a little bit. Spacing the fuel filter out, that's that's easy. The oil block for this is gonna be a little bit more difficult, but where did that uh, the oil filter housing go? Right there. Perfect. Had to do a little, little notching in that web there just to get that to go in there. We just relieved it a little. This block's stronger than the other one anyway. See. I'm gonna hang it on there. And it's, I got yeah, these long looks. bolts so we can adjust it out until we, until we get to a point where we can measure it. Mm -hmm. And we need a chunk of aluminum or something to make that out of. Yes. Well, that all clears too, so that's all gonna work. I think we have a spare gasket too, which we could use as a pattern. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, use out a pattern for our aluminum. Yep. And we're just going to have to throw on the vise and saw. <laughs> well, kind of. And then put it on the drill press. So that's kind of what we need. Yeah. That don't look bad there. Is that far out? We could actually go in to about there. It's got to have... It's got to, we can't go straight across either because you see it'll hit it's the got to, um It's got to notch right in. The notching of the bracket here is what we really want to follow. We have to maintain that. Yeah, we got to maintain all that. So. What's it look like, an inch and a half almost? <gasps> we could use a chunk of two by four. There you go. <laughs> get, a, get a tape measure. Tape measure? Yeah, or the... Oh, uh, got to be out that far. You're a mile away. Caliper. Well, that there's an inch and a quarter. Here's the tape measure. I'll prove it to you. Right there, what's that? Inch and three eighths. Inch and three eighths. Let's figure inch and a quarter. And we get a we gain about a sixteenth of an inch with the with the gasket material. That means we need inch and a quarter thick aluminum. Yeah, let me go scrounge around. And unfortunately we only have one chunk of aluminum that's three quarters inch thick, so we're gonna have to double it. So it's gonna be two spacers. So right. this gasket here is a little different. Is but, it really? But it's a better pattern. Yeah, this is a gasket for an earlier style engine. Why do we have that? Because I bought it with the kit for the case of Matic. Oh! But it's good. But it works. It's a, better, it's a better template, really. And then you're just going to use the gasket to make your pattern, and I'm then you're going to cut two of them and them, yeah. drill them out and all that, and bada boom, bada bing. Jigsaw. I got jigsaws. I bet that cut that with a metal blade. It'd be the easiest way to cut it. Yeah. It was like a three hour tour making that. Two blocks. But we took a chunk of aluminum. I had a flat piece of aluminum that was three quarters of an inch thick. So we made two of them. We got an inch and a half worth of spacer. Cool. Wound up using uh, Sawzall mostly. But the holes are in the right spot. So that all lines up. We'll do that. And we're gonna hook that up and get that bolted on there. This type of thing is we're having a couple of machines in the shop is. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a little bit of a machine shop. Yeah, if you had a little lathe and a little mill. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. but. We have a drill press, a vise, and files. So we get away with stuff somewhat. Yeah. I wasn't anticipating any issues with the steering, and there we are. No, here we are. <laughs> yeah. So between the steering and the, yeah, the steering really just yeah. caused a half a For day's worth reason, of stuff. I just figured everything was going to sneak through there, but that makes a lot more sense that it wouldn't. <laughs> but it does now. Well, we got a little further today. Yeah, we did. So. Yep. Got the case matic valve back on. Yeah, the that valve issue I had with the detent. I didn't which... tear into this any more than I had to. This lower spool stayed in. Okay, there's a lower spool and then there's another spool in here that act, uh, acts on it with a spring between them. And there's some seals and stuff. But this tractor worked good, so I didn't mess with it. No. I pretty much just cleaned it down and put this one back in. I checked the seals there. There's two seals on the end there so they don't leak and they were still supple and stuff. So I kept them. Yep. And you put the uh, filter back in. It was back together the way it came apart, really. Spring, a retainer, and a cap. Yep. And a screw that goes through the whole deal with a copper washer. And I torqued that screw down to 55 foot-pounds. You know, sealed that back up, and these are going to get 25 foot-pounds tomorrow morning. And we got the new filter from Elmer's <clears throat> Repair. You know, that's like that's like uh, that beaver hair and felt that they made hats out of. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like <laughs> a Stetson hat. It is. The new one cut was, you know, there was kind of a bit of dust coming off, so I flaked some of that off, and then I just left it alone. I figure once the oil's in it, it'll trap a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess we're done for today. Well, guys, we worked on the tractor today. We got a lot done. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.